a single node is one node, this is single node and this is called as a symmetric multiprocessor. We call it as an SMP system. Symmetric multiprocessor is a name for single node. And if we have more than one node, more than one, it can be any number less than 4000. And it is called as an MPP system, massive parallel processor. So whenever we say MPP, then it is more than one, more than one node. If you say SMP, it is only one. And each and every node can have the same number of configuration, or it is the, the processes are configurable. You can configure according to your requirement. There are limitations. We will be looking into that, but those are configurable parameters. How many number of passing engines you want to have in a node? How many number of access module process you want to have in a node? Those are configurable, configurable parameters. Now, uh, since uh, going to the other slide, I will just uh, explain here basically how uh, that uh, parsing engine or access module processor basically how that is beneficial. In general, right, we assume this is a single uh, processor, assume this is a processor, okay, and then we have a single disk, okay, so this is basically a disk. And now, what are the request processing we need to do? This is how it does. This is the traditional system we have. But, same thing, when we install Teradata software or Teradata package, right, on the machine, what happens is basically, this is the processor. Okay, and then uh, this is a disk. And then there lies the virtual process. So when you install the Teradata uh, package, right, it basically con when and when you install it and then you do the configuration and all those parameter settings, right? This is how you can imagine how basically a single process is acting as a multiple processor, and how does a single disk is basically acting as a multiple virtual disks. So this is how the this is a traditional system, but when you install Teradata RDBMS, right, then these kind of VPROX can be configured. That's why we say these are virtual processors. So basically, the, when you install Teradata package, right, it, then the processes can be configured into these parameters. There are limitations basically, like a single node, you can configure only 128 process maximum, passing in and out. But this is a single process and single disk is acting as a, like a multi process with a multiple bit disks. Any questions?
for a single node, how many parsing unions can we make? What's the max? Like uh, collectively, we can uh, we can have one twenty eight okay. processors. Mm -hmm. So mostly the P's will be less than the amps in general. Yes. Mm -hmm. And even uh, each and every component, right? They are capable of handling multiple requests. Like suppose if there are around uh, n number of sessions to be allocated. Like if if we three wanted to connect to a single server and there is only one parsing engine, that parsing engine is capable of handling 120 sessions maximum. Each parsing engine is capable of handling 120 sessions and that to parallel. Mm -hmm. Message passing layer can access the request parallelly. So suppose we three people are submitting a request, passing engine has broadcasted all the three requests to all the amps. So message passing layer is having three different types of requests from different sessions from the passing engine to the amps. So MPL will handle all the requests in a parallel fashion. Similarly, each amp is holding a three requests or three tasks to be performed. Like one will so they will be collecting something and one will be like I don't know, deleting something. Like yes. Something. Yeah. True. So it is capable of handling again 80 tasks parallelly. Within each and every amp, it can handle 80 tasks in a parallel fashion. And at the same time, all the amps are performing the operations of the task in parallel. Mm -hmm. So that's how parallelism has been designed from top to bottom. And each component is implemented to act in parallel. Do you have any similar RDBMS system like this apart from Net is also okay. is like uh, the architecture is also similar to this one. Okay. Yeah, a teradata means basically it's a tera, terabyte, you say 1000 GB, 1000 GB, 1 terabyte, 10 power 12 bytes of data. And then these are some of the common differences between uh, teradata and other RTPMs. Most of the uh, differences now in the current uh, environment or the current scenarios, right, they have been uh, reduced. But still few of them are valid, like uh, this one as I said shade nothing architecture. So basically the data uh, works on the concept of shade nothing architecture whereas other RDBMs follow the concept of shade architecture. And what, what exactly that means is basically uh, each uh, as I said each AMP is responsible for processing the data onto the associated disk. Right? So this uh, data and the, uh, this data will never be sh shared across any other process. If it wants to process that particular disk data, then it makes a request to the TAMP and then make a copy of the data onto the local drive or the local disk and then perform. A simple uh, doubt might arise like uh, we are having this data distributed across multiple AMPs. Okay, suppose table T1 is distributed like that and table T2 is distributed like that. But if I want to perform a join, a join can be performed only if the data resides on the same app. Then only join can be happening. But what about the uh, join then? Now two tables I need to perform a join. A recording amp 1 need to be joined with a recording amp 2. How, how does it basically happen? We either move or uh, replicate the data across multiple amps or we again distribute the data across multiple amps so that the join can happen. So basically it, it it is based on the request basically. So well, who does that? Is it Teradata that does that by itself or you will do it when you are doing the join? Uh, no, no, the Teradata internally does that. The optimizer will generate a plan like this is how you need to perform and then once the plan is being sent to each and every amp, right, the amp will do that. Okay, then how many amp do you have in one node? One node maximum as I said you can have 128 V props um, combination PE and amps combination we have. So, because in the demo version, right, we have one passing engine and two amps. Okay, so if it's um, 
the, the, the enterprise version, how many passing engine you can you have? Uh, maximum uh, is it uh, 1024 per system. If I say it's enterprise data warehouse, then if so you it can have more than like you it can has, have 1024 yes. passing engine and how many amps? Uh, uh, maximum again it is 16,000. Okay, for one node. No, no, no. For one node, it is uh, 128. Collectively, we can have, we cannot have more than 128. Okay. And nodes-wise, as I'm saying, it can have around 4,000 nodes. That is the maximum. So some of the clients, uh, some of the biggest clients like Walmart, right? Walmart is having around 900 nodes, and they are having around uh, 9,000 amps like that. Mm -hmm. 900 nodes and 9,000 amps. Then where is the generator optimizer located? Internally? Optimizer is there within the parsing engine. Oh, okay. Optimizer is a module, sub module of parsing engine. Yeah, and uh, one more uh, difference is basically the index usage. Uh, index usage basically it is used for faster retrieval of data. So even the same thing is possible in Teradata as well. But apart from that, even a better storage of data is possible. Here we are seeing a good distribution of the data. Right? Basically that is because of the index being defined on the table. Because of that this is happening. So in Teradata index, is, index usage is basically for faster retrieval as well as for better storage of data. Uh, but then, uh, can you explain yeah. in how join happens between two tables? I didn't understand properly. Uh, suppose uh, a simple case we will say, we will take. For the time being, we will assume only we have around apps okay and now I have a table t1 data so I will say uh, uh, employee 1 and then a and department number 10 and salary 23.4 record uh, 2 employee b and then uh, department 20 and salary 34.5 okay so similarly here I will have employment Three, then employee C and department uh, twenty seven fifty five point five. This is employment four D ten thirty three point four. Okay, now you have a table T two, which says okay department ten, it is uh, max. And we have a department 20, which say science. Now I need to perform a request. Select start from T1, comma T2, where T1 dot department number is equal to T2 dot department number. Okay. So in this scenario, what happens is basically. What does the optimizer suggest to tell data is? Basically, this is duplicated. This is duplicated scenario. Now, T1 and spool will be joined based on this employment department number with this department number. Similarly, these two records will be joined with these two records. Okay. 